Hello Sagittarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Sagittarius February 2023 astrology horoscope forecast. This is for you if Sagittarius is your sun sign like me, your rising sign, your moon sign, or any other placement of Sag that you watch for or listen for, this is for you. And if you're a very late degree Sagittarius friend, so birthdays from around December 15th through the rest of the sign or 23 degrees or so, placements through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Capricorn report as you late friends have a more complex read and you can benefit from both readings. I'm calling the theme of this month for Sagittarius divine miracles and I will go into all the reasons why plus we have other things to talk about to help you understand the energies of the month so that you can make the most of the astrological potentials. This is a month that I am very jazzed up about for Sagittarius. If you've been following my reports for a while, you know that usually when the energies start to move into Pisces, I always note, and this is true in this case too, that those can be a little conflictive for us. They're, they're squares, they're emotional things. We usually have home and family stuff to deal with. You know, um, things can be a little intense, but I'm especially excited about some of the protection and offsetting energies that are coming from movements through fire signs. Now, it's not going to take away the potentials that we will likely experience from having squares coming to our placement, but it can help offset those energies when we have trines like we will have. Okay, so I'll talk about all of this, but it's very exciting to me as a Sagittarius and hopefully you'll be excited too. So the first thing to know is that we have another month of more sweet aspects compared to salty ones. So the planets are getting along more often than not this month, and the few bumps we have are things that should pass quickly. Also, we have a break from the heat of eclipse season. We had an extraordinarily intense eclipse season, September through November. I know I was feeling it. Those Taurus Taurus and Scorpio eclipses have not been in a very positive angle for Sagittarius placement. So from the end of 2021, you may have been feeling a lot of ruckuses in your financial world, in your, you know, deep relationships and your emotional space. And, you know, it's really intense. So this is a period of time, January, February, where we have a break from the heaviness of that eclipse cycle. And plus... The next eclipse cycle that really starts March, so really next month, and even this month we might start to see some hints of it, but it's still kind of in this peaceful integrative period. But we are going to start in April, a new eclipse cycle of Aries and Libra, which will be in nice angles for Sagittarius. So that's something to look forward to. You can kind of think back to between 1995 and 1997, 2004 and 2006, the end of 2013, to 2016 and now from 2023 to 2025 and think about the types of changes that occurred then. Maybe some of them were intense and stressful. I remember for me too, but there were also massive amounts of positive changes that happened in those windows for Sagittarius placements as a result of these um, eclipses being in a nice angle for us. So we've got that to step forward into, but right now we've got a little peaceful period before all that starts happening. And for all of the action-oriented Sagittariuses who like to blaze forward and light up beautifully with creative expression, you'll be happy to know that we are now in the first and longest open window of direct planets of 2023. Okay, and it's a really big deal because not only are the personal planets direct, which is what we're usually following, also all of the outer planets that we traditionally look at in Western astrology are direct. And it's very rare that that happens. What that means is that from September through January of, so September of last year through January of this year, we had introspective, retrospective, retrograde, going backwards, slowing down from Mars retrograde, things taking a while, emotional you know, inward, inner work. And now, February, March, into April, we've got a chance to make up for lost time. If there's something you were working on that was just dragging on for months and still not getting done, you can get accomplished in days what seemed like it was taking months and didn't even happen. So that's very, very exciting. So things that got put on hold, things that you know, there were frustrations or delays, you might find things are really racing forward now. And we're entering this best open 
period of the whole year, really in my mind, especially for us, because with these Aries energies being so pronounced, even now in this month with Venus getting there and Jupiter there in Aries, making trines for our placements, we've got extra zest and zippiness and expansion of ambitions and, you know, those big dreams that Sages tend to have and those big goals. There's a return of those kind of things coming back in when they had been sort of maybe a little more dormant for a while. So it's pretty exciting and it's a pretty big deal. So there are other open windows in 2023. If you want to see the whole um, calendar for the year to understand how to place your, um, you know, actions to align with the natural rhythms of the universe, you can go to AnnieBAstrology.com, Annie, the letter B, astrology.com and connect in with my exclusive content portal. And I have my 2023 retrograde direct calendar there. And it can make a huge difference when you align with these natural rhythms. Okay, so we have all of that going on and it's very exciting. So now we can start to drill into this energy of divine miracles. So the first thing that I want to talk about has to do with a lot of energy in a long-term way moving through Aries, okay? We've got Jupiter since last year, even though it dipped back into Pisces, now through May, going through fellow fire sign, making trines to all of our Sagittarius placements, lighting up our fifth house of passion, of romance, of children, of creativity, of our bucket list, things that we've always wanted to do, things that put us center stage in ways that make us feel fulfilled. And just our expression, you know, a lot of Sages I know are not trying to be center stage. They just want to express themselves and have that information fall upon people who will be grateful for you know, and helped by what they're offering. So the chance that you will be able to help people with your expression is dramatically expanded at this time. And a lot of divine miracles can happen in all of these areas of experience. So divine miracles involving children, healing your relationships, or having a child if you've been wanting to have one. Divine miracles having to do with your creative expression and your creative babies. Divine miracles in your romantic department. Also, we have Chiron moving through Aries. Chiron is the wounded healer. Sometimes there's a lot of heavy energy associated with that placement. But again, it's in a trine for us. And this has been a long-term thing. It's there for about five and a half years. It's been, you know, close to halfway through that now. But this is something else that's adding up to the stars right now, with the stars right now, that's offering us opportunities to heal places that were wounded and turn that woundedness into strength that can really work for us and other people. So we've got divine miracles in healing. We've got divine miracles in healing our physical bodies. And there are multiple layers of that going on. So if you're a Sag that has had problems with your health, if you have been um, stuffing down your negative emotions in an attempt to be positive and it's been manifesting through you know, physical maladies, you might have some amazing divine miracle breakthroughs with your awareness or with therapies or treatments that can actually help you to heal and possibly even heal completely. The theme of January that I had for you, for us, was big money wheel turns our way. And there is still strong energy um, coming from those connections in our second house of money. So divine financial miracles, divine financial miracles that have to do with transformation and how we earn money or use money or experience the material realm. All of that is set up for divine miracles for us. We also have short and long-term energy moving through Aquarius, which makes a beautiful angle for Sagittarius. So you can see what I was kind of alluding to before. Usually once the energies start moving into Pisces in February and then go through March, you know, like I said, like it's, it's water that puts our fire out and it can really dampen our enthusiasm and dampen our optimism and you know, really give us a lot of personal and familial things to deal with. And those things may come up, but the odds that there are positive framing to these things are much more likely because first of all, Venus, even though it's in Pisces at the beginning of the month, by the time we get later in February, it moves into fellow fire sign Aries. So there's like this pushing through these emotional pieces having to do with money, having to do with relationships, having to do with home, having to do with self-esteem. And in the same month, pushing on through to the gold, you know, the gold, the miracles, the Grandma Marge blessings. For those of you who don't know my Grandma Marge, she was 
one of my Italian relatives who would grab me by the face and kiss me and give me money and tell me how wonderful I am and give me a meatball and just is all about the energy of sustenance and comfort and approval and connection. And so we've got that transformation through walking through some fears and walking through some challenges. Then we break on through to the other side all within the same month where all of that converts into, you know, alchemically changes again into this miracle vibration. I am very much connected to the understanding that everything, that frequency is mathematical and that math is form and form houses spirit. And so the connection between math and divinity is very clear in my mind. And as such, we can use frequencies to help ourselves heal and to attune our vibrations. So you can look up the 528 miracle frequency. You can just search for 528 miracle frequency. You can find it on YouTube and find videos that have that frequency. Um, I also make uh, subliminal recordings that include the 528 frequency. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and click on train your brain. But, or you can just, you know, find some stuff for free on YouTube for the 528. And so listening to that miracle of frequency, you know, miracles can happen for anyone at any time. It's not related to a sign or, or time period per se, but there are a lot of things that I see in our chart that really are ripe for miracles. And if we do everything we can to energize our fields for that miracle space, it's going to, I think, increase the odds that we have those breakthroughs and the frequencies can help you. So you can just search for the 528 Miracle Frequency and play it, you know, and listen to it and attune your vibration to it if, if that's something that you're drawn to. Not while you're driving, because sometimes, you know, those kind of things can affect people when they're operating heavy machinery. But, you know, if you're relaxing or just kind of hanging out doing stuff, you can have it on low and can help you to usher in this, you know, juicy energy. Something else that Sagittarius have been dealing with since, gosh, like last summer or last winter for you all down under is that Mars has been going through Gemini for a really long time. That retrograde transit, besides it's slowing things down and all of that, that has, that energy has been opposing us in 180 degree angle, our Sag placements and been, you know, in the house of relationships. So we've had a lot of either indecision or running around, extra driving, like family members needing things and we have to drive around for them or, you know, for work. Like there's been extra mobility, which in a lot of ways, Sag is love, love to be mobile, love to be busy, love to be in motion whenever possible. But it's really been too much, you know? So, you know, from last August into September of last year, all the way through till now and even into March, we still have Mars and Gemini, but now that it's direct at least, um, hopefully we're getting a better system together of managing all of the correspondence, the communication, and the, the physical mobility things that have been coming up. And some Sagas may have had some interference with your physical mobility, either through car issues or through things with your knees or your legs or some other problems. And hopefully as Mars you know, shuffles along, if not sooner from this opposition, then, you know, it will help us with our uh, mobility again. Another place I see a chance for divine miracles to shine through in a big way is in our divine work, our divine vocation. We have the planet Uranus bringing the potential for active revitalizing change in our work sectors, in our, you know, our daily sector, our routine, things we do every day, our systems, and that has been moving in close connection to the planet or, or the, the planet, the north, transiting North Node, which shows us our areas of highest expression this lifetime. So the chance for getting on track with our divine vocation um, or having seeds planted where we're moving towards our next level of our divine vocation is another place where we can really claim those miracles and so I wanted to mention that because if you, you know, if you feel like you're in your divine work, great, you can intensify or expand that experience with this energy that's around. And if you are looking to draw that in or to get clues as to what that could be, then, you know, the energy is really ripe and ready for you to, uh, to draw that information in. 
So besides the sun moving Aquarius this through Aquarius this month, Saturn has been moving through Aquarius for a while and has been giving lots of opportunities for long-term goals and long-term creations um, and just really building a strong foundation for Sagittarius's. So we've got the sun being a spotlight this month. So that can show us, first of all, people who we have things in common with and really bringing us to new groups and new tribes and new, you know, um, teams and community connections that can make us feel good. Like we're part of something greater and a sense of belonging of, you know, connecting in where we're sharing our gifts and applying them to something greater for everybody's benefit. So there's a lot of good energy there for Sagittarius at this time. And that's also with writing and teaching and learning. So if you're writing a book or blogs or want to do that, awesome energy for Sages. If you have taken on study, like if you've been having these seeds planted for your new level of your vocation and your divine vocation, you might find that you're in a study program to do that. And that energy is burning bright this month as well. You can make a lot of headway with your studies at this time. We also have February 5th, a full moon in Leo, fellow fire sign. So in those first days of the month, we've got fullness, completion, fruition coming to some, the area of Sagittarius in our charts. So all that energy that rules different countries and different cultures and the teaching and the learning and different languages, something might come to fullness or completion or fruition. We might reach a goal. You know, immigration is in there, international travel. So something big that maybe has been brewing even for 13 months or so, or 13 moons, may come to fruition, could bring drama and challenges. You know, Leo is known for its drama and the full moons are known for its drama, so, or their drama. So you could see, you know, something dramatic happen with kids or with um, a romantic partner or with one of your creative babies, but it could turn out to be an awesome thing. And since it's in a nice angle for us, I'm hoping that that's true. So all Sagis can get the benefits from that. It's a great time to allow yourself to create and express and just have fun. If you're close to 16 degrees or within five degrees of there, so we'll say 11 degrees to 21 degrees, the closer to 16, the more of a kiss you get from that full moon early in the month. So that's really like December 1st through 11th and the closer to like the 5th or 6th that you get that kiss from that full moon. You might want to pull in for a little rest and kind of a break in the days around February 19th through 20th when we have that new moon in Pisces. This is a time to really just kind of take stock of what's going on in your emotional space. Just retreat a little bit and have some private personal time or connect closely with some people close to you. Could be related to something with family um, that needs some attention or an opportunity to heal an old wound or hurt in the family department. It can also have to do with houses and real estate and housing. If you want a list of all of the most relevant aspects and how they may affect you delivered into your inbox one month early, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. Sign up for my free email newsletter and you'll get that. Also on AnnieHelpsYou.com, you'll see all the free goodies I make for you each month so that you can take advantage of what I work hard to give you. If you would like to learn how to be an astrologer, either for your own personal spiritual development to help your friends and family or to earn money from your passion of the stars. That's my area of expertise. I can train you from zero to go or enhance your knowledge if you've been studying for a while and help you feel like you are ready to accept money for your work. See my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course at beastropro.com, beastropro.com. And all these links are in the notes underneath the video or podcast. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.